It's about that time of day again. My name is Joseph. It's Wednesday evening, April the 5th, 2017. Welcome back to your nightly newsletter. We got crude oil, S&P, gold, euro, and FDAX on the dock tonight. Crude is bearish, but the sellers just got their double down news target, which tells us to stay patient, avoid selling low, and look for either a trap high or a breakout pullback to new lows tomorrow. The S&P is bearish with a spike in channel tonight, which tells us to look for retracement off the low, looking for traps and failures to complete a big quadruple down target tomorrow. Gold is bullish after a strong reaction to the FOMC report this afternoon. The price is far too high to buy now, so we're waiting to see the next pullback with the goal of using a trap or a failure to go back up and retest the highs. Euro is bullish after today's FOMC report, but the buyers need to show us they can hold this pullback, because if they don't, the sellers are waiting to fade this move back down to the lows. The FDAX is bearish, but we are two legs down off the highs, which tells us to be patient for a correction higher so we can sell high again tomorrow. I have another great newsletter in store for you guys tonight. I get a great lesson on trading a trend reversal and plenty of reliable trading opportunities setting up for tomorrow. Before we jump into the charts, though, I do want to remind you, only place to watch the full-length version of this video is on our blog at sidewaysmarkets.com. If you're watching the video right now on our YouTube channel, not to worry. There's a link in the description of that YouTube video. The YouTube video is only a small snippet of the entire video. Follow that link in the description of the YouTube video and come join me on the blog at Sideways Markets for the full-length version of tonight's newsletter video. While you're here, don't forget, join the mailing list. I'll send you an email every evening when our nightly newsletter goes live. Follow me on social, right below the left-hand side of the blog, right? Don't forget, follow me on social media. I'm always posting important links and updates throughout the day. Download those charts. Grab those charts from tonight's video and have those charts ready on your computer. Download those charts right below the video tonight on the blog. And, of course, please don't forget to grab your free pass. If you're brand new here at School of Trade, if, you, if you're not an advanced member here at School of Trade, don't forget to grab your free pass. You'll learn more with me in 90 minutes on that afternoon webinar right, than you will anywhere else on the interwebs. I can guarantee you that. And please don't forget, if you're brand new here to SOT, get a great Frequently Asked Questions page on our blog. And I got live support. If you have any questions, I'm standing by to help every step of the way. It's been a great, great week here. Boy, we got a bit of a bomb drop here this afternoon. Get some FOMC. A little bit of a concerning uh, bit of news from the FOMC this afternoon. The market's definitely reacted accordingly. We'll jump into charts in just two seconds here. First things first, though, let's make sure we take a look at the schedule for tomorrow. Tomorrow is the Thursday, April the 6th. Don't forget, we are watching here as we get closer to that employment situation number on Friday morning. Friday's employment situation, the non-farm payroll report on Friday morning, does tell us to expect some lower volume tomorrow afternoon. So for all you equity index traders, e-mini traders out there, be aware tomorrow afternoon we're likely going to see a Probably a pretty drastic slowdown, um, especially after what we heard from the FOMC meeting minutes this afternoon. So heads up on that tomorrow afternoon. Keep an eye on the volume after lunch tomorrow. Probably going to see things slowing down as we go into that big news report on Friday morning. Look at the news reports here. We get a, we have the general services PMI from China tonight at 9.45 p.m. If you're trading the Asian and overnight session, please don't forget about that major news at 9.45 p.m. Eastern time. Tomorrow we get some minor news from the Swiss E and the Reserve Bank of India at 3.15 and 5 a.m. I would imagine, though, all eyes and ears in, L in London tomorrow, we'll be focused on the ECB meeting minutes at 7.30 a.m. Eastern time. That's where the fireworks are going to be, right, are going to be happening. We saw the meeting minutes this afternoon at 2 p.m. Eastern time, and you saw how drastic the markets reacted to this afternoon's report. We have the same report tomorrow coming from the ECB at 7.30 a.m. Eastern time, so be aware of that, especially if you're trading gold or euro tomorrow morning. Watch out for those ECB meetings. Minutes coming out at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Time. And then, of course, we have the kind of the standard, you know, jobless claims on Thursday morning. Um, I, I, I don't really worry about the market moving very much from those jobless claims. This is uh, – it's still listed as a major news event, but – it, boy, it's been years and years and years since we actually saw the jobless claims move the needle. The real jobs report will be on Friday morning at 8.30 a.m. And we'll talk more about that in tomorrow night's newsletter. So the big thing for tomorrow is afternoon, right? Tomorrow afternoon.
afternoon. Heads up for low volume ahead of the non-farm payrolls on Friday. Again, overnight session, you got some news from China. And then, of course, tomorrow morning in London. That's pretty much the big news of the morning, you know, is that 7.30 a.m. I would imagine tomorrow is going to be weighted towards the early half of the session. Everybody will be reacting to today's FOMC announcement. And, of course, we'll hear from the ECB tomorrow. So get to it early. I'll give you guys a good plan here for tomorrow's session as we jump in. Don't forget, we're going to be with all of our advanced members in the trade room tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock Eastern time. I really hope to have the opportunity to follow right along with you there tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock Eastern times. So come out and join us as a client. Jumping in here tonight, we got crude, S&P, gold, euro, and FDAX. Crude is bearish and trading at the inventory double down target after sellers were given a perfect opportunity to sell the recent retracement. The bears have control, but this recent test of the lows tells us that most sellers will take their profit and look for selling opportunities up at higher prices or wait for the next leg down and look to sell high using traps on the way down to that big measured move waiting below. As you can see here today, we had some I'm going to see a lot of this uh, tonight on the newsletter. I'm going to talk about later on in this video uh, some scenarios we're seeing on gold and euro, which is a great example of a pending trend reversal. So stick around for more information on a trend reversal, as you can see here, right? <laughs> yeah, they got their trend reversal earlier on here today. I'm going to show you a better example of this, though, um, later on in tonight's video. Uh, most important thing here, obviously, we talked about this last night. We had big news this morning at 10.30 a.m. 10.30 news comes out, right? Price spikes down and you know this is very typical whenever we see a news event a big strong spike that spike tells us two things first of all you can use the size of this spike to project down a news target right we call it a double down take the size of that spike and literally copy and paste it and you can see that's exactly what these sellers were hunting for here at the same time we also know that spike will usually result in a spike in channel right we talked about this in last night's newsletter if you didn't watch last night's newsletter make sure you go back and watch it because i talk about those four different scenarios that happen whenever we see a strong move in one direction so we get strong spike down that turns into a spike in channel and then look what happens here we get that beautiful trap high the sellers get a beautiful chance here to sell high where's their target their target is of course going back down to retest that low now here we are end of the day on wednesday going into thursday's session how would you describe this market right now well i would say we had a strong spike down spiking channel sellers sold high and now here we are at the low if you ask me is this price cheap is this expensive? We are priced relatively cheap right now. And I know if I'm trying to be a seller, if I was selling my car, or selling my house, selling anything, right? Would I want to sell it cheap? No, I want to sell it at a higher price. So that's exactly what the plan is right now for the bears. Really two scenarios whenever we find ourselves sitting at the low of that range or at the low after. Again, this is where it's important. You remember to go back in time and think the bears had their shot here to sell high. If you were a seller and you did it the right way and sold high, where are you now, right? You're too low. So what is it going to take to attract more bears into the market? One of two scenarios. Either price goes up so we can sell it again, back down, or price goes lower. We don't want to chase after it. You know, a lot of stuff happens in the overnight session these days. Price goes lower. Rather than chasing after it, look for that fake out, break out, pull back, little trap high, and sell from there. Those are going to be the two most reliable opportunities setting up for tomorrow. Again, with the bears being at their target, at their double down target, you can see this big green candle coming out right now. Not, not very surprising. Want to see this price go up. And really, any of these levels of resistance overhead will work. I have the battle zone listed up here at 51.33. But really, anything here up at 13 right back down up at 51.33 these are all significant areas of interest right up at the resistance levels overhead now assuming price does go higher and remember guys i'm going to go over the game plan for tomorrow we teach all of the actual trade setups the entry triggers what we use to get into these trades i teach this stuff in our advanced classes so if you want to learn more about that register as an advanced client right and you'll learn all about the actual entry triggers and this stuff the bottom line though is as we go up moving average comes over 
buyers try to buy the pullback, right? They fail, and that's going to be an example, right, of a of a buyer failure, right, going right back down. As the market goes lower, I would want to see that moving average follow suit, strong move down. I'm not a big fan of selling that first pullback just because you've got a lot of buyers here who will fade that breakout. I like to wait for a little trap, and if I can get a little trap high, that gives me a chance to kind of play that game, right, that nobody, wa no, nobody wants to get trapped, right, or, or, or should I say sell low. And so trying to avoid the temptation of selling low, I always like to see, right, that little bit of a trap high. If the market just rolls right over and goes right to that measured move, don't forget to look for a trading range here, right? And again, keep selling high, right? Keep selling high as the market finds a way. Now again, again, we're trying to avoid selling low as the market goes lower. If the market does go lower, we'll definitely follow suit, but be very careful not to chase after that move as it goes lower. So either get it up and bring it back down or get it down, right? And then get it up so we can sell high with the appropriate right trap high and entry trigger. What would it take right now for the buyers to take control? A whole lot of strength, that's for sure. The bulls have to see a new higher high, hold the pullback on strength. And if those buyers hold the pullback on strength, then we can start talking about this being a bull market and the objective we up to retest the high at 51.88. A very, very interesting chart there on crude oil. The news report at 10.30 gave us a strong trend reversal and one key component to a good reversal is that trap right there hold that thought we're going to talk more about that idea trend reversal don't chase after it trap high that's the best right that's the not the best it's the most reliable trading opportunity you're going to get there's more where that came from here as we go later on in this newsletter let's keep chugging here on the S&P S&P is bearish with a spike in channel at this triple down support level this evening the spike lower is a big, big clue, telling us that price will likely be considered too cheap to sell at this point, and the most reliable selling opportunities will likely come after a retracement higher off these lows, and then we can look for traps and failures for a move back down again. Here is a very, very good example of news comes out this afternoon. Again, this time, not the inventory report that we saw in crude oil, right, but the FOMC meeting minutes. These FOMC meeting minutes kind of painted a picture, well, they used the word they use the word uh, uh, overvalued right a little bit overbought uh, and basically if you read between the lines in the FOMC announcement or the FOMC mean minutes at the last FOMC announcement there was quite a bit of concern of of increased prices in the equity markets right a lot of folks calling it right the bubble right looking at this now as being overvalued and susceptible to a sharp correction that of course was not was not very welcome right to investors and of course traders across the globe and price sells off anytime we hear the FOMC right talk about prices being too high on the equity markets right you're going to see a reaction like this so the buyers now walk away they can't even retest that high and the market tumbles Anytime we see a strong move in one direction, right, spike down, we know that next pullback will likely be sold and down to retest that low. If you watched last night's newsletter, you know that anytime we see a strong spike, pull back, and then a lower low, that lower low tells me it's going to be either a spike in channel or a spike and wedge. So one of two scenarios coming forward tomorrow, it looks to me like a spike and channel, right? We may see it develop into a spike and wedge, but there is one thing in common, no matter what we get here, and that is, look at how long it's been since we tested that moving average. It was two o'clock Eastern time this afternoon, was the last time we pulled back to that moving average. The next time we pull back to that moving average, you're gonna see a lot of patient sellers will be waiting up there right, to sell this price right back down. Whenever we have a strong move into a spike or a spike in channel, we now know we're looking for that price to go up into previous resistance so we can sell it back down. That's the plan here for the sellers on the S&P. Get it up so we can sell it back down again to allow us to avoid selling low and gives a chance here to sell high. Now, as the price goes lower, a very, very important clue on this chart is this quadruple down at 23.35 even. Now, we've talked about this in previous newsletters, but to catch you up on things here, 
four legs. Four legs are always usually a good time to take your profit, right? That'd be quadruple measured move, a quadruple down. And of course, you can see here, right? It looks like they found their triple down, right? And have settled in there nicely right now off of the highs. Double down, triple down, quadruple down. Usually, obviously, there's no guarantees in this world, right? But usually, once we get four legs down, we see, we see a pretty...